My last couple of rides on these brake pads have been a little squishy. So I think it's gonna be a problem that we're gonna find in the brake pads. And you can actually see a little bit of damage on my rotors, meaning my pads have gotten down to pretty much, uh, pretty much their metal backing surfaces and they're starting to score my rotor. Um, if you see any scoring on a rotor, it might be a good idea to get a new rotor. But for now, I'm just gonna replace my pads, roast through them, and then I'm gonna replace my pads and my rotor at the same time sometime down the uh, down the road here we're going to need some gloves some brake specific synthetic grease a large flathead screwdriver some brake parts cleaner some new brake pads and for the xt250 we're going to need a 12 millimeter socket a lot of the materials used in brake systems is carcinogenic so if you have a respirator i would suggest that you use it but i'm going to throw some rubber gloves on uh, just because I don't want any of that stuff actually entering onto my skin and being an abrasive or um, kind of uh, irritating my skin. Um, if you do have a respirator, I recommend that you use it because we are going to be cleaning parts. We're going to be using uh, some aerosol spray and uh, just make sure you wear the proper protective equipment uh, just to keep yourself safe. Uh, we are going to be dealing with grease, so you know you're going to want to have grease on the greasy things and you're not going to want to have grease on the non-greasy things so switch gloves often we're going to undo these two bolts that are holding our caliper on uh, using a 12 millimeter socket Now that we have our caliper hanger bolts a little bit loose, we're gonna start working on loosening these front caliper uh, support bolts. Now we can pull off our caliper hanger bolts, freeing the caliper off of the front fork and we're going to undo our caliper bolts here we're going to re-grease these later So now that these are loose, we can now split these two pieces apart and we're left with our caliper, with our pistons and bores, and we're left with our brake pads and our actual brake pad holders. So now we're just going to let that rest right there. It's a lightweight pad, so I don't really have too much apprehension about the, um, the brake line having any issues holding it, uh, but we're going to focus mainly on our... Uh, caliper hanger side. This exterior part right here is actually called our front brake caliper bracket. So what this does is essentially it acts as a backer that our, um, that our brake pistons push against. So our brake pistons push against our brake pads and this bracket actually holds the most inside section of, of the brake and allows, allows that, that piston to actually apply pressure to it. So removing our brake pads out of here is really simple. You can just slip them out um, in this direction here. So believe it or not, brake pads are actually different. You do have one brake pad per side. You do have one for the inside, or well, the outside of the bike and one for the inside of the bike. The one for the inside of the bike actually has a shim uh, on the back of it that the caliper bracket actually rests against. We're gonna go ahead and reuse this piece. Um, although it's recommended in our factory service manual to actually replace it. Um, and the other brake pad actually has two divots for the pistons. As you can see, there's not a ton of life left on these pistons, so I'm glad I'm changing them when I did. This is kind of an irresponsible level to get them to, 
but I mean it's better uh, better late than never. There's still a little bit of life left on these, but the damage to the rotor is pretty much pretty much already done. We're already past our wear mark on this one if you can see that. We're going to be throwing on some EBC Double H Center brake pads. Uh, these ones I picked up from Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Um, these ones are kind of the standard when it comes to high performance brake pads. And there are three different types of brake pads that are available. There's the metallic ones, there's the centered brake pads, and there's also the organic ones. The centered brake pads provide the best performance. Now, this is kind of the importance of changing your brake pads. This is a brand new brake pad, and this is the brake pad that I've been running with on my bike. There's almost no meat left on this. So what that means is, as your brake rotor is passing through here and you're applying the brakes, there's not a lot of material that's going to transfer and dissipate heat onto, uh, um, onto a, a worn brake pad. So that's why it's really important to have um, new, uh, new, new replacement brake pads or new brake pads on there that have a ton of meat on them just because the, it acts as more surface to actually bite. Um, and the more material that you have on there, the more efficient the brake uh, is actually going to be in terms of dissipating extra heat. So there's the new one and there's the old one. Like I mentioned earlier, there are two different brake pads and there are different sides that you need to actually uh, put them in. This brake pad actually goes on the inside of the bike. So essentially it's on the on this part of the the brake, so on the inside of the rotor. This one actually has a shim that's on the back of it, and we're gonna go ahead and remove this and install it onto our new brake pad. So there you go, it just pops right off. Uh, I'm gonna use some brake cleaner. I'm gonna use some brake cleaner and clean this one up before I actually throw it onto my, onto my new caliper, or onto my new brake pad. So here we go, I'm just using some non-chlorinated brake cleaner. And what I'm gonna do is just pop this sucker off and then just spray down that shim and then let it dry. So there we go, that should be good enough. Should be pretty clean by now. Um, just use the appropriate amount of brake cleaner to make sure it's clean and then just set it aside to let it air dry. While we're speaking about stuff that we're reusing, uh, we're also going to be re reusing the metallic spring clips that are actually on the inside of this brake uh, caliper, caliper bracket. These, it's these parts right here. One right here and the other one's on the opposite side right there. Our factory service manual says that we should replace these springs our shim and our caliper um, all, all, and our caliper brake pads at the same time. Um, but since we're reusing it, I'm going to I'm going to clean this one as well using some of that brake cleaner. Make sure you're in a well ventilated area and you're wearing proper protective equipment like uh, like glasses, protective eyewear, and make sure you're wearing gloves. And if you can uh, wear a respirator as well. Um, you're not going to want to get any brake cleaner on any rubber parts. You want to try to avoid that just because it can it can it can damage some of those parts. So we're going to take it a little bit easier on on some of these areas with the with the with the rubber right there. Now that we got it sprayed down, I'm just going to go ahead and wipe it down with a uh, a cloth just to make sure I have any extra extra uh, brake buildup on there taken off and it's just that attention to detail that you want when you know when you're working on your own bike there you go now it's all nice and clean perfect we cleaned out the the channels and the clips so uh, we're more likely to have a you know a nice quiet set of brakes there uh, but once again the, the factory service manual does recommend that we change both of these spring clips on the inside of our brake, um, our brake caliper bracket. Now that we just have our brake caliper here, uh, we're going to go ahead and try to clean this up as best as possible. Uh, we're going to want to try to get our pistons clean, especially the area around our pistons, just to make sure that they're uh, moving freely 
and we don't get any extra debris into our system. Now that we have our shim nice and clean, we're gonna go ahead and install it onto the back of our inside brake pad. It should just clip right on. If it's loose, you can bend the tabs a little bit, but once again, you, should be or you shouldn't be reusing this one. You should be buying a factory new one, uh, just like the factory service manual says you should. Now that everything's clean, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our, uh, our brake pads into our brake caliper bracket. So they should just slide right in. We wanna make sure that we have these in the right orientation because there is a direction to them. Um, believe it or not, I know it might sound kind of dumb, but they only, there are two ways to put them in. You can put them in meaty side towards the rotor or you can put them metal side to the rotor. Um, one of them is right and one of them is wrong. You want the meaty side, uh, the side with the actual centered metal uh, to actually grab onto the rotor. I know that sounds kind of dumb, but you know, hey, common sense isn't very common, you know what I mean? And this is what your caliper bracket should look like fully assembled. We have our shim on our inside brake pad. We have our uh, metallic surface uh, on the back that goes against our pistons. We have the meat on both sides in the middle of the, the caliper bracket. And we have our rubber boots facing the outside of the bike. This thing's all ready to go back onto the caliper, but we're gonna go ahead and make sure that our pistons are pressed all the way in. By the looks of these brake pistons, I can tell the next time I take these things apart, it's gonna be a full rebuild. These pistons have a little bit of scoring on the outside of them, and there's a ton of dirt, which means that the seals that are inside of here are most likely compromised. Now that we have access to our pistons, we're gonna to wanna to try to press these in as far as we can uh, so we have enough room to actually put our new brake pads on there. And we wanna push them in because our new brake pads have a lot more meat on them than our old brake pads did. So we might have some difficulty refitting our brake pads into here if we don't push these calipers in. If we don't push these pistons in, I mean. These two bolts actually hold our front caliper to our front caliper bracket. So what we're gonna need to do is clean these and grease them up as our factory service manual says. And in terms of grease, you only wanna use silicone based grease, like a synthetic grease that's made specifically for brakes. Um, there are a ton of different greases in the automotive and motorcycle industry. It has to be brake specific. Don't cut a corner on this one, okay? We want to make sure that these pins are clean and dry before we put our grease on there so that way we're not introducing clean grease to a dirty environment. Our factory service manual says that there are four points that we need to grease. We need to grease the inside of these rubber boots on each part of the caliper, one here, one here, and we need to grease the shaft of these two pins here and here. What these pins do is they slide into here and they lock your front caliper bracket to your front caliper. The grease that you should be using should be brake system specific grease. I know it might be tempting to use whatever grease you have lying around, whether it's petroleum based or whatever, but you have to be using brake system specific grease. That is very important uh, because the your brake system is actually subject to a lot different temperatures and environmental conditions than your standard grease and the grease that you're using on your brake system lubricates some very important parts. So you don't want to compromise your, your stopping capability. Use the right kind of grease, okay? So there you go. A little bit of grease there. Spread it. And then I'll put this down somewhere nice and clean. Just spread it on there and I'll put it down somewhere nice and clean where it won't get dirty or pick up any dirt from, from the rest of my garage.
We're gonna put some grease into here and here. Not a ton of it. We don't need a ton of it, we just need to squeeze a little bit in there. Just like so. Now that I've got grease on my gloves, I'm gonna go ahead and pull these off and then throw on a new set just to make sure I don't contaminate any of my clean surfaces with that grease. So this part's kind of tricky. It's kind of like you need a third hand, but now that we have our, our pistons pushed in, um, we're gonna go ahead and try to assemble everything back onto our, um, back onto our rotor. So we're gonna spread our brake pads out a little bit just so, so that there's a gap that our rotor can fit into. Um, as you can see, it's kind of off kilter here. So we're gonna spread that apart um, just so we can get enough room for our rotor to fit in. Um, since we have it in pieces right now, we're gonna go ahead and throw the front brake bracket up front onto those hanger screws. We're gonna hand tighten the bolts that are on there. If we can get them to line up. And then here's the tricky part. We're going to try to get our caliper onto our front brake caliper bracket successfully. This is why it's kind of important that you fit those, fit those pistons back into their bore as much as you possibly can. There we go, looks pretty good. Now we can slide those, those pins that we greased into their sockets and get those tightened down. Alright, now that we have everything pretty much hand tightened down, we're going to want to check and make sure that everything um, is actually fitting where it should. So we're going to do a visual inspection all around the entire brake caliper and rotor just to make sure we didn't, we didn't do anything stupid, we didn't cut a line or anything. Um, and uh, just before we kind of tighten everything down, we want to do a visual inspection. So everything past our visual inspection, all we have to do is tighten these bolts down and tighten these bolts down. There is a torque spec in our factory service manual for the caliper to front fork. We're looking at 29 foot pounds and we're looking at 23 foot pounds for this uh, front caliper bracket bolt set. So let's go ahead and spin our torque wrench up to 29 foot pounds. There's 25, 26, 27, 28, and 29 foot-pounds. There you go, there's 29 on that one. And we're gonna pull until we feel a click. There you go, 29 foot-pounds on that one. We're gonna dial it down to 23 foot-pounds for those, those rear greased pins. So we're gonna dial it down. Uh, we're at 29 right now, so we'll spin back to 20. We'll get to 20 here, 20, 20, 20. We're gonna go to 21, 22, and 23, and that'll be 23 foot-pounds, and we'll tighten down these two bolts right here. There you go, 23, and 23. And there you go, that should be it. So I just finished taking the bike out for a ride and uh, I forgot to tell you guys something. It will take a little bit of time for you to scrub those brake pads into your rotor. So make sure you take it easy. Um, your stopping distance and your brake performance might be a little bit different than when they're fully broken in. So make sure you take it a little bit easy on the first couple, um, couple hundred miles, probably about 100, 200 miles and then they should scrub in pretty well. Um, another thing you wanna check for is, um, when you do have 
your brakes on there you want to make sure that while you're riding you don't hear anything or see anything or smell anything that can actually be a sign of some some premature wear on some areas that aren't supposed to be wearing but and there you go guys we pretty much just finished up the um, XT250 front brake caliper disassembly and uh, we threw in some new brake pads in there we reused some of the parts that we should have replaced as per our factory service manual but you know you have to use your discretion when you're working on your own bike if you think the clips are going to work and if you think the shims are still going to work for you hey man that's up to you but i mean i hope you guys found this entertaining now that we have that all done uh our next step would be to bleed, bleed the brakes because as we we're pushing and pulling on those pistons um we probably introduce air into our master cylinder so we would bleed our brakes from here but i hope you guys thought found, i hope you guys found that entertaining and I hope you guys um, kind of learned something about, about the XT250 and how I changed the brakes on them. It's a pretty simple process. It is a little nerve wracking at first, but just kind of use this as a guide. I mean, don't use this as a how-to as per se, because you know, I make mistakes, you know? Essentially, you should be using 100% new parts from Yamaha, but you know, that's not always the case if you, if you don't buy new shims, if you don't know, buy new clips, you know, and if you buy EBC brakes instead of Yamaha factory brakes. But it's up to you as a mechanic to figure out what you're okay with and what your conditions are. But really, it's your safety at the end of the day. If you're throwing, you know, cheap parts on here, cheap kind of, kind of iffy parts, well, you're going to get cheap, iffy performance. So, I mean, you got to find a balance in yourself and in what you want to do as a mechanic. But that pretty much rounds it out for the XC250 um, in terms of front brake pads. Uh, I hope I was kind of co coherent with this one. Uh, it, you know, it's hard. But anyways, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day. And until next time, peace out.